Ooh, that um, is not going to be a good outcome for that driver. But what do you guys think? Jeez. Welcome back, guys, to A Trucker's Life. I'm Jorge Navarro. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you've already been subscribed, welcome back, guys. And that could be a product of not doing your pre-trip inspection, unfortunately. In all the years that I've been driving trucks, which has been 18 years, give or take, I've never seen, I've seen, not too long ago we saw one fall off at a truck stop, but I've never seen one fall off, a trailer fall off on the highway. Wow, the potential dangers, the potential hazards that that could have caused had it fallen on a car, had a car or ended it. Wow, luckily, but at the same time, unluckily for the driver, it fell off and it didn't harm anybody else. And just the trailer, I guess, got damaged. I don't know how much got damaged on the trailer, but it didn't look bad. It didn't look bad. I don't know if it was loaded or not. The trailer really didn't look like the landing gear was, were, were messed up too much. And um, I guess the only thing that you would kind of think about would be the lines on the truck, the, the airlines. That would be the only thing that I would think that really got damaged. But, wow. Uh, what do you guys think? Is he going to lose his job? If it was for not doing a pre-trip he probably is i'd hate for anybody to lose their job for any type of reason but mistakes happen you guys know me if y'all been following the channel long enough y'all know how much i mess up when i drug a trailer half across the country well not really kind of sort of i drug a trailer with the wrong product or the wrong trailer uh about what how many miles was that like four or five hundred miles away from uh the terminal and it was the wrong trailer that was also a mistake but that mistake potentially couldn't have harmed anybody but if it would have been dangerous materials then i guess it could have it's all about pre-trip and it's all about paying attention now that that happened to me i am on top of my game again i used to be i mean i used to be real stickler on checking the numbers and checking everything making sure everything's good to go and with time and time and time as older the older you get the more complacent you get sometimes some of you guys are perfect um i'm not and uh, the more complacent you get and you, the more susceptible susceptible you are to having uh, these type of issues these type of accidents because we just uh it's just think about it as second nature and, and quit paying attention as much as we should that's what i'm trying i guess trying to get at and um so i don't know could this be though question for you guys that have those trade those trucks that have the automatic uh, releases could it been a truck failure huh we gotta think about that too we can't just automatically just blame it on the driver and just you know just judge them like that because we don't really know what could have happened those of you that are mechanics those of you that have these type of trailers could they be could it be unlatched while you're driving is that a possibility because then that's a whole different type of thing because then had that been a truck failure who would have been responsible for that the driver let's say the driver did what he was supposed to do let's say you know everything was checked and he hooked up and he took off and everything was good to go and then all of a sudden it unhooked then who is responsible for that there's always somebody responsible right everybody's always uh, saying that it's just a, a, a something that just happens nothing just kind of happens just because there's always a series of events to get you to that spot and the 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 thing is what happened there like as curious i am because i mean like i've always said before my name curious george just kind of fits me just right my parents just did it just right for that because um yeah i'm just a curious person and what what do you guys think what do you guys think do you guys think that it actually could have been the truck could have been a truck failure from my experience since I don't know anything about those type of uh, fifth wheels, the, the automatic fifth wheels, I would say tr I would say driver, driver error. That's the first thing that came to my mind. But then I started thinking about it because actually Gemini G7, uh, shout out to Gemini G7, go, go check out his channel, go subscribe if you're not. Um, his truck is actually, I remember him saying, I think his truck has the fifth wheel that actuates or opens with a, with a button. And uh, so that, that, I guess I could ask him that too. That's something that, uh, huh curious about it now could it be open could it open by itself or was it just driver error too quick to judge 
I, I was too quick to judge. Now that I'm really thinking about it, there could be other possibilities. But nonetheless, guys, if you have the regular type of fifth wheels, I've never heard of those coming undone. If you have the regular type of fifth wheels, make sure you give it a tug test before you leave. Make sure you get off and actually see that, that the uh, pin or that the, uh, uh, the handle is actually pushed in and go underneath there and check if the pin is actually closed. Do those things and this right here that just happened would not happen. At least I don't think it would happen. Come on, my mechanics, you guys let me know. Is it possible? I don't know, I don't know. Like I said, I'm quick to judge somebody and uh, I don't even know what the circumstances really were. But yeah, pre-tripping, very important. The other thing guys, the whole generator thing, the whole APU, ghetto APU, it's gonna be a little series. And I have not done anything else with it since the last video you guys saw, just because it is cold. It is 54 degrees right now. Well, for me it's cold and uh this thing doesn't have a heater it only has an ac so it doesn't make any sense to try to make a whole video on showing how i figured all that out how i made it work or whatever if it doesn't uh it's not even needed i mean i would it would be kind of a be kind of lying not really but kind of sort of be kind of lying if i told you guys that it worked well and it's cool and it would work well regardless right because it's not even gonna be doing its real job but on the research that I've been doing lately the air condition might be an issue just because I've heard that they're very inefficient and it might not work but I've heard other drivers that actually have had these units in their trucks they say that it actually does work so we're gonna find out together this is really really just something that we're gonna find out together because I really don't know but yeah we're gonna we're gonna figure it out how it works and everything i have an idea though i have an idea on how to do the window thing do you guys remember those of you old school drivers are going to remember this those new guys you're, you're not um the idle or remember idle air idle air which were those uh we have them at our yard which are those those air conditions it was they were at truck stop you pull up to the truck stop and there's these air conditions on, on top and it had like these this big hose that would run and it would go into your side window I think that was way ahead of its time. I think they should bring that back. I don't know. What do you guys think about that too? I think they should bring it back. But anyways, so that idle air, that that had like some type of uh, insert that you would put on your window and then it would it would clamp into place. And what I was thinking, if, if I could find one of those and actually chop off the part that I don't need and be able to find a way to put that hose that I got for my AC in it, it might just work out. Or if anything... I can use it as a template to cut out or to mold what I need as far as so it can mold around the window and it will be a good fit. Thought about that too. Another thing I kind of thought about is maybe putting it on the window sleeper, running it to the window sleeper. I mean, to the, yeah, to the window of my sleeper, <laughs> running it there and seeing if it works. Uh, if I could figure out how to how to put it there too, just so it would look a little better, I guess. But I'm not gonna be running down the road with this thing on, guys. I'm gonna as soon as I get ready to go, I'm gonna take it down, put it in a spot, and put it in the wind. So that really doesn't matter. But I'm thinking about the first option might be a little better. So I'm gonna try to get a hold of one of those, and I kind of know where to get one. Shh, don't tell anybody. But I kind of know where to get one. But I would not know how to tell you guys where you could get one. That would be the problem. But if you can get one on eBay, probably do that too, which I don't even know how I would look it up. But yeah, so I'm going to try that. That's how I'm going to try to figure that part out. And then uh, hopefully that will work. But this is all going to be a bunch of trial and error, guys, a bunch of uh, just see what works, what doesn't work. And it's just going to be a work in progress. It's mainly to keep us busy when we're stuck somewhere and we're not doing anything else. Yeah, mainly that's why I got it. No, not really. I got it for the truck and to save money. But I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna go through it with you guys, and so you guys can see how it's all working out and all that good stuff. But if you don't see a video here after this video, if you don't see one immediately after it, um, it's because it's probably still cold, and I'm still trying to figure out get all the parts together and then put it, get it in, uh, get it, get it back in, put it, install it in the truck, and get it ready to go. Another thing I was thinking also that I could also run tests at home 
where I could run the generator outside because you're kind of supposed to run these generators when you first get them. You're supposed to uh, run them for about 10 hours to, I guess, to make sure everything's working fine or whatever. And um, so I might just do a test at home, take everything home and do a test at home. Just seal off one of my rooms, close off the air vents and see how good it cools. That room, that is going to be way bigger than this, but the house is way better insulated than the truck as well. So I might, I might go that route. Um, I already did, uh, I already did uh, the warranty thing. So it is, it's not difficult, but you got to go through the website to uh, set up the three-year warranty for the generator inverter. So pretty cool. At least it has three years of warranty, which is kind of everybody else. I think Honda's is only six months. So Harbor Freight, I'm not sure what Hybrid Harbor Freight's is, but I've heard that, that they got pretty good. It uh, depends on how, how good you get along with the person at the at the store maybe that they'll exchange it because I had a driver tell me the other day that the guy the manager at, at his store that he bought his at just told him hey uh, bring it over bring it every year and I'll do you good I'm, I'll put you another one every year so that's a possibility too I don't know but on this particular one three years is the warranty and it's just for you know the engine and, and stuff that if it breaks on its own if you broke it then uh, yeah whatever you know <laughs> But anyways, so that's it on this video today, guys. Guys, thank you so much for being here with me. Just a little bit of update with everything. And also comment. Comment, guys, on all that stuff that we were talking about earlier as far as could the fifth wheel, could it, done, could it have come undone on its own? Is it an air-actuated type of fifth wheel or is it just driver error or equipment error? I don't know. Just comment down below on what do you guys think about that, uh, those of you that are mechanics, and uh, let us know. Oscar? Make sure you comment because you are the manager of Elite Truck Repairs there in uh, Laporte, Texas. So, quick little plug. <laughs> nah, but I uh, had a great experience with them, so that's why I've kind of messed with them a little bit. But Oscar, comment down below. Let me know. Can you actually do something? Uh, or could that have been equipment error? Don't forget, guys, to be kind to one another. Help anybody needs help. Anybody contemplating suicide, please don't do it. But if you are thinking about it, phone number that you can get a hold of is 1-800-273-8255 that is one avenue to get your help but there's also family and friends that could also try to help you out thing is we love you and don't leave us military men and women thank you so much for your service see you guys on the next video peace out of here.